Good morning. Uh, my name is Emerson Perrin. I'm the medical director of the Texas Heart Institute. And first of all, I want to thank uh, Joe Rogers and Juan Carlos Plana for the invitation to uh, share this uh, information, this uh, work that we're doing with you. And, and uh, what I want to uh, briefly uh, talk about is a DREAM HF trial now. As you know, uh, at Texas Heart Institute, we uh, have had a research focus uh, on regenerative medicine and specifically cell therapy, and even more specifically, uh, cell therapy uh, to address the clinical problem of uh, heart failure. And so beginning uh, around 2001, we uh, have gone to, to present, we have gone through many trials, um, many of which we have led and many of which we have participated in. And the DREAM HF trial that I'm going to talk about now is a trial that was initiated in 2015. Um, took uh, five years to perform and, and has a, uh, a long follow-up of three years and is now go going to uh, be uh, published uh, upcoming uh, in the Journal of American College of Cardiology on February 27th, so it's currently in press. Uh, unfortunately, I can't share the final data with you, but I do want to give you a feel of what this trial uh, looks at, what it represents, and um, have you um, uh, hopefully get excited to see what we're going to be able to show. So, um, first of all, my uh, disclosures. Um, so the DREAM HF trial is, was a multi-center, randomized, double-blinded, sham-controlled, events-driven trial of mesenchymal precursor cells in um, heart failure reduced ejection fraction. Uh, and of note is this is both ischemic and non-ischemic uh, cardiomyopathy. Um, the sponsor was Mesoblast, a, a biotech company in Australia, and uh, myself and Barry Greenberg were the uh, uh, chairs and the PI, co-PIs for the study. Uh, there was a, a clinical endpoints committee, a data monitoring uh, committee, as you can see here. And the trial was performed across 52 sites uh, in the U.S. And, and Canada. And here you can see the sites. And the, each site had a heart failure investigator as well as an interventional uh, cardiologist investigator. Um, given uh, regulatory uh, concerns, given that this is a, a phase three trial, there was a firewall between the interventional team that treated the patient when he came in as opposed to the heart failure team in the hospital that did the initial screening and then did the clinical follow-up over the long term. Here are the remaining sites. So mesenchymal precursor cells are cells uh, that are uh, come from the bone marrow and they're allogenic. So uh, as I mentioned, many of the cell products that we've gone through the years initially were autologous. This was easier to access and to process. But these cells are actually, uh, the, the cells used in this trial are, are from three healthy young donors and that created uh, cell banks. And, and these cells are obtained from, the, from a bone marrow biopsy, and specifically from the bone marrow with the use of an antibody against um, STRO3, which selects for STRO1. So these are STRO1 positive cells. Um, and the, there is a fair amount of, of, of clinical studies uh, demonstrating uh, how these MPCs work and that they have anti-inflammatory, immunomodulatory, proangiogenic effects in both models of ischemic and non-ischemic cardiomyopathy. Um, we performed the first uh, in human injection of these cells back in 2006 in, in uh, Australia, Newcastle, and performed a phase two dosing study that's published in Circulation Research, as you can see there. Uh, and this phase two study really suggested that um, there were very, very intriguing uh, clinical uh, MACE um, uh, effects related to uh, benefits related to injection of these cells. So let's talk a little bit about the mechanism of these cells. Uh, you can see there, the figure's a little busy, but if we concentrate where it says MPC and that, that the blue cell there. Um, so that's a cell that we uh, put into the myocardium, into areas that are not scar, not normal, but uh, of intermediate value that are viable. And we have the ability to detect this when we map the heart and inject it uh, in a retrograde way back through the aortic valve with a catheter. 
And so these cells, when put in the, the environment of the myocardium, they have receptors. They read the environment that they're in. And if they're in an inflammatory environment, and you can see here IL-1 beta, TNF alpha, uh, are uh, cytokines that are secreted by pro-inflammatory uh, macrophages uh, that are present in the heart. And actually, if you uh, look at how heart failure uh, begins, it's, it's inflammation. Uh, if you look at how, failure, how heart failure maintains itself, it's principally uh, from the cellular side through uh, the action of M1 uh, macrophages. So these cytokines then stimulate the MPC that then reacts to these cytokines by putting out uh, substances that will counteract uh, the action of these M1s. It actually polarizes the population of M1 cells that are present in the heart to M2 cells, and M2 cells are prohealing. And you can see from the substances that they secrete, IL-10 uh, has an action on, on cardiomyocytes. Um, PDGF has an action on smooth muscle cells. FGF has an action on endothelial function. Uh, and also direct secretion of SDF, uh, VEGF, and angiopoietin-1 from the MPC has direct action on the endothelium as well. So we see uh, local uh, actions as well as systemic actions in terms of what these MPCs secrete. And what we have here around is just demonstrating that IL-6, that soluble IL-6, that is a product of inflammation in the heart uh, is then in, in the liver uh, induces the, the production of CRP. We measured CRP in these patients as a marker of inflammation. Um, so specifically for the trial, uh, the patients included in the trial had um, at least a class two or class three symptoms and were on optimal uh, guideline medical therapy for heart failure with no other option for conventional vascularization with an EF of less than 40 percent. And the population was enriched with at least one ho prior hospitalization or uh, clinical visit with the use of diuretics or an elevated uh, BNP, as you can see. Um, and, and so in the study, as I mentioned on the left panel, you can see we come retrograde just as a catheterization with femoral access with a seven and an eight French catheter to map and then subsequently inject these cells as you can see in the middle panel. And uh, we can do this uh, as the color coding of the endocardium uh, we control and make that represent um, uh, electrical activity, specifically unipolar voltage. And, that unipolar voltage then guides us to viable versus non viable myocardium. On the right panel, you can see the black dots, in this case, where we uh, injected the cells in a particular patient. And here is the uh, uh, flow uh, chart of the uh, study design. Uh, initially, 1,167 patients were assessed, uh, assessed for uh, eligibility, and 565 patients were randomized. Um, there was a time lag between uh, uh, randomization and treatment, and that's why some people fell out. So of a 537 uh, population, there are 276 in the arm um, that were uh, treated without receiving cells, and 261 that were treated receiving the cells. And you can see a balance between functional class um, that subsequently was geared towards enrolling more class three patients as the, we needed to replenish those in, uh, in the study, and uh, a balance between non-ischemic and ischemic uh, cardiomyopathy, which turns out to be about 60-40. The baseline characteristics are, are shown in this slide and show really no differences. You can see there that the 60-40 uh, division uh, on class two and class three, and also the ischemic and non-ischemic uh, uh, numbers there. And it's important to note that these patients were uh, very well treated in terms of their uh, heart failure medications, which are listed on the, on the top of this table. Um, in, on echocardiography, you note that the LVEF in, in the population of this study was around 28% at baseline. Uh, they had a fairly compromised uh, six minute walk, and there you see the uh, NP, uh, pro BNP levels. So this is the primary endpoint. The primary endpoint, man, you look at this and you're like, boy, this is pretty disappointing. Actually, we've been doing cell therapy for quite a while, and this slide tells us more than a positive slide um, because it tells us the following, that these cells 
do not work like every other single therapy in heart failure, which is geared towards correcting uh, neurohormonal maladaptive changes that happen with heart failure. So these cells are not uh, decongesting or uh, taking care of volume overload. As I have mentioned before in the mechanism of action, they're actually targeting inflammation and heart failure. So an endpoint of recurrent decompensated heart failure events would not be affected by this and is not. What is very interesting though is a, a, a significant reduction and a quite significant reduction uh, through all the population and again these are these are the uh, preliminary results the final results are going to be published and uh, uh, with a more sophisticated analysis and the numbers are a little different but actually better. Um, 65% uh, reduction overall in non-fatal MI or, non or stroke in these patients that receive something, a treatment in the heart. So you can see that there's a systemic large vessel vascular action uh, that's anti-inflammatory and immunomodulatory in these patients. And here you can see a composite of uh, cardiac death, non-fatal MI or stroke. Again, um, the, the endpoint that I just showed you is on the panel on the left. If we now separate it out, in patients with a CRP greater than two, which is a Cantos-based definition of elevated CRP representing inflammation, versus on the right, a, a low CRP, you can see that the v most of the benefit is in the inflamed patients, which confirms that this really is an inflammatory uh, therapy. And here you see um, a, a very uh, uh, significant uh, reduction uh, in both the overall population as well as the elevated CRP population. Um, finally, um, this, this slide, and uh, I think we're a little pressed for time, so uh, uh, just to tell you that the CRP correlates with IL-6 levels as it should, and this slide uh, uh, confirms that for us because as we dose IL-6 as well. So in summary, uh, you can see the mechanism slide uh, part there in the square, and uh, so we're putting these cells in the myocardium. They're acting like little factories of cytokines and growth factors and, and molecules that affect uh, anti-inflammatory and Im immunomodulatory changes, both at the level of the heart and the level of the systemic vasculature. And then on the right, you can see we target then in the vasculature of the heart, we see decreased myocardial infarction. In the vasculature of the brain, we see decreased stroke. And then locally, uh, in the heart, we see improved neurovascularization, stabilization of vascularization, probably decrease of apoptosis and Im improvement of energetics and cardiomyocyte metabolism, which probably translates into decreased cardiovascular death. Uh, the trial was safe and there's no issues. Again, this is, these are allergenic cells, so there was no uh, meaningful uh, allergenic effect of these cells and also transendocardial delivery was safe, so the procedure itself, very, very low incidence of complications related to the procedure. So, in conclusion, these cells uh, delivered at a dose of 150 million uh, MPCs, which was found in our phase two dosing study, was safe, did not elicit meaningful immune responses. The MPCs um, had did not uh, affect recurrent heart failure hospitalizations, but did have a significant event in reducing MACE events such as non-fatal MI and non-fatal stroke and a composite of cardiac death, non-fatal MI or stroke. And these benefits that we see in terms of MACE with the MPCs are really uh, mostly present in inflammation, which leads to us understanding their anti-inflammatory immunomodulatory mechanism. And again, uh, I hope uh, you stay tuned, and on February the 27th, we'll have the online publication uh, in the journal, Jack. Uh, thank you very much.